What an opening week of the Tour of France it has been. Just full of suspense, drama, and thrilling high pace racing. A few too many crashes, but overall a fantastic week in the Tour of France. I'm glad it's rest day before it continues tomorrow. There've also been quite a few nice bikes on display. And in this video, I picked some of the hottest bikes that have grabbed my attention and maybe grabbed your attention. We'll go into detail and discuss them in the comment section down below. So we have a very yellow Canyon with a fixed handlebar by the looks of it. We have defending Tour de France champion, Tadej Pogaccia, now on a disc brake Carnago versus the rim brake version. He won the race on last year. We had the super lightweight February Specialized Athos being used in competition for the very first time. And the comeback kid himself, Mark Camdish, is racing aboard a Specialized Tarmac SL7. So let's dive in. Let's start with Mark Camdish, who unbelievably is back to his winning ways. He's put age and injuries and other setbacks to one side and is back to his former glory and edging ever closer to Eddie Merck's record of 34 stage victories. So he might well do it if he gets through the mountains to the final stage in Paris. Quite an incredible comeback. And he's doing it all aboard the latest specialized Tarmac SL7. Now, before we dive into details on his bike, a quick plug for the video I did recently where I looked at every single bike that Mark Cavendish has raced since he turned professional in 2005. Back then, he was on a giant TCR Advance, not dissimilar to the one I'm currently riding. You might see in my new build video at the weekend. And he'd been through Scots and Specialized and BMCs, Merida's, back to Specialized, and now he's back on a Specialized again where he's had a lot of success over the years. So Tarmac SL7 is, as you know, the latest generation race bike from Specialized and takes the low weight of the old Tarmac and the aero performance of the old Venge and merges it into one platform that's both lightweight and aerodynamic. You might see my review on the comp version, the cheapest version of the SL7, link above if you missed that. Very impressive performance. But of course, Mark Cavendish has the S-Works, so a lighter weight frame, and it's adorned with some of the top end kit you'd expect in a pro peloton. So it has a Shimano Dura Di2 group set with a Shimano dual sided power meter using Shimano SPD SL pedals with the red cleats, which have zero float because Mike Cavendish, when he's sprinting, when he's putting at a thousand watts or more, doesn't want his feet moving around at all, wants a locked in position, and that doesn't require you get your cleats set up in the perfect position to avoid any knee injuries. I don't recommend these at home, but if you're sprinting and you want to extract every ounce of performance, the fixed float position, or not fixed float, but the lack of float is the way to go. Mark Cavendish is all about aerodynamics, as is the Tarmac SL7. So we have the Roval Rapid Aero handlebar with the cables and hoses inside the handlebar, then underneath the stem into the frame. And we also have Roval Rapid CLX deep section wheels with turbo cotton clincher tires with latex inner tubes. So the team for the last season or two have been moving away from the traditional tuber tires where you glue on a tire to the rim to clincher and tuber tires but now it seems they've settled on clincher tires with latex inner tubes for low weight and roll resistance benefits you get from such a setup. And he's using disc brakes, which he's not unfamiliar with, having used disc brakes at Dimension Data and Bahrain Merida, but now using disc brakes because the entire Quickstep team are on disc brakes. With a small detail change, being the normal dual race rotors have been replaced by XTR mountain bike rotors, presumably because they're a bit lighter, so a few marginal gains there to be had. So Mark Cavendish, on disc brakes with clincher tires. So quite a big fundamental change there, not tubs and not rim brakes. So if you think disc brakes are rubbish and slow, and if you think clincher tires aren't fit for the pros, well, Mark Cavendish is proving that they are perfectly adequate in the most demanding, fastest sprint of the Tour de France. Now, unfortunately, I don't have information on his frame size, handbar width, stem length. You need to be at the Tour de France with a tape measure in hand to actually get those details but I'm going on what we can see from the pictures that the team has shared with us. So hopefully that detail will come out uh, at some point during the race. Perhaps the biggest surprise at the weekend as the race hit the mountains was that Tour of Flanders winner, Casper Asgreen, switched from a usual Specialized Tarmac SL7 to the February light Specialized Athos S-Works. This is surprising because while the bike has a UCI approved sticker on the seat tube that you can see very clearly in the pictures, when the bike launched last year, Special made a big deal about this bike not being for racing. It wasn't designed for the pros to race on. 
is designed for people who want the best performance in a super lightweight package for the sheer enjoyment of riding. And the big question is why? Why is he riding a bike that in the top end S-Work trim is a claimed 5.9 kilograms, which is well below the size minimum weight limit of 6.8 kilograms. And when reportedly their race trim Tarmac S07 can hit 6.8 kilograms. Well, apparently in an interview with Cycling News over the weekend, it's because Casper Asgreen prefers the comfort, the ride smoothness and quality of the ASOS over the tarmac. And because as he rightly points out, in a peloton when you're surrounded by teammates, he doesn't need the aero benefits of the Tarmac SO7 so he can get the comfort from the ASOS with no downside. And I totally get that. I've ridden both bikes and the ASOS in my mind is much smoother and much nicer ride quality than a Tarmac. The Tarmac is quite firm, it's quite an edgy ride. It's clearly built for speed and it's clearly a faster bike than the ASOS when speed matters at high speeds where aerodynamics become a factor. But for ride smoothness, they're the ASOS, you can't beat it. Up there was one of the best high-end bespoke carbon frames I've ridden in the past. It's just strange to hear a pro talking about a preference for comfort, when for years pros are all about just make it stiffer. Can you make it stiffer? That's all they want normally. So to hear a pro being concerned about comfort is quite surprising and quite refreshing perhaps as well. So yeah, interesting one. So comfort is clearly a factor, but he hasn't forgotten aero with deep section Reval wheels, with turbo cotton clincher tires, with latest inner tubes, and the aero handlebar from a tarmac on the ASOS in place of the round handlebar you normally expect on this bike, which is not designed for aero, but designed for ride enjoyment and ride quality. But are they changing enough to get the bike up to the 6.8 kilogram weight limit, or have they added extra weight to the frame, lead weights in the bottom bracket perhaps, in the way they used to in the olden days to get the bikes up to the weight limit, or have they done something else? No details on how I got the bike to the weight limit, but maybe by going to the aero handlebar and the aero wheels, that has pushed the weight up. But the biggest shock of this bike is the amount of seat posts on show. Holy moly, what is going on here? Well, clearly it's a case, as we've seen many, many times in the past, of a pro bike rider choosing a frame size that's one or even two sizes smaller than they really need. Why is he choosing a smaller frame? Well, a smaller frame can be lighter, that's a big reason to choose a smaller frame. And the other reason is geometry. So a smaller frame has a shorter head tube, so a lower stack, so you can get a lower, more slammed aero position. Then you run a longer stem that they usually prefer. And more seat posts gives a bit more comfort, can kind of flex more and more than a shorter seat post. But it does seem a bit crazy because we come a long, long way in terms of bike fit and frame sizes and getting better fitted on the bikes and not fitting the bike to the rider. To see a rider, basically just going way outside of what you would expect would be the right approach. So I don't advise you to copy this at home. Get the frame size that fits you, get professional bike fit, get measured up. Don't copy the pros, because the pros, why do spend a lot of time on a bike and know what they need to get the best out of their performance when they're racing the Tour de France. Um, not always the best place to copy a bike fit and definitely don't copy this at home. They can't be much seat post in the frame, if any at all. And it can't even be a standard seat post, it's probably a special long seat post to give him the fit he needs. So I wouldn't recommend you copy this at home. Well, Mathieu van der Poel really made an impact on his debut Tour de France, didn't he? Doing his usual thing of tearing up the rule book and just tearing up the road, attacking at will and riding himself into the yellow jersey. And doing so, being given a very yellow Canyon Aerode CFR to race. And before we dive into the bike for a closer look, let's talk about handlebars because you might remember that early in the season, I forget the race it was, Mathieu van der Poel broke the handlebar or his handlebar broke on his bike that he was racing at the time, the Canyon Aero, in quite a dramatic style, lots and lots of press coverage. And as a result, the Aero with those handlebars, the CFR and the CF SLX version, the two range chopping tiers of Aero, not the CF SL that I tested, link down below if you missed that, were recalled. And the company had been working on a fix for that handlebar and it looks like that fix is out in the Tour de France and being used by Mathieu van der Poel. Not all the team were using it, but Mathieu van der Poel were using it and given his performance in the first week of Tour de France, it seems to pass that test with flying colours. So hopefully there'll be a solution for all Canyon Aero customers that are desperately waiting for a fix for their bike, which they can't ride at the moment. So good news on that front. So Mathieu van der Poel really made quite an impact on the race and did it aboard the Canyon Aero CFR. The Aero is the aero platform in Canyon's range, 
compared to the lightweight focus ultimate that climbers will prefer. But Mattia, like many young guys in the sport now, really understand the benefits of aerodynamics and he always chooses the aero air road over the ultimate. I don't think I've ever seen him ride the ultimate. If he has, let me know down below. But when he slipped into a yellow jersey, Canyon pulled out a very special yellow Canyon Aero CFR for him to race until he lost the yellow jersey and then pulled out of the race at a weekend, sadly, to prepare for the Tokyo Olympic man bike race. Now, yellow bike is such a cliche in the Tour de France. It's like a standard thing that a team does when a rider gets a yellow jersey. But I actually remember the first time a bike manufacturer or bike brand gave a Tour de France leading rider a yellow bike. Um, let me know in the comment section below if you do. But it became a thing in the last five, 10 years probably. And now it seems to be the done thing to supply the leading rider with a yellow bike and also yellow equipment from suppliers like pedals, uh, the Wahoo computer, bar tape, and other bits and bobs, saddles as well, popular yellow products on a bike. But these days, the teams and bike manufacturers are much more organized when it comes to preparing a yellow frame for the potential of a team rider, a team leader wearing the yellow jersey. And we know this is the case with Mattia van der Poel's air road wearing some very special messages which show in clearly weeks or even months in the pipeline. And let's be honest, who would have bet against Mattia van der Poel winning the Euro jersey for at least one stage in his debut Tour of France? A fairly safe bet, that. But it does make you wonder how many yellow frames have been made over the years for just such an occasion. But for one reason or another, that team rider hasn't won the Euro jersey and that yellow frame has never seen the light of day tucked away in the back of a team truck, but never never been built up, never seen the light of day, never been used in anger. What happened to the yellow frames? I guess they go back to the bike manufacturers, do they get cut up and then destroyed? Or is are the yellow frames all over the world in the back of manufacturers' factories and workshops and HQs? I'd love to see all these yellow frames that have never seen the light of day. That'd be quite a fascinating story and video for sure. But yeah, very special yellow bike for Mattia van der Poel. And finally, probably the biggest news on the tech front at the Tour de France is that defending champion Tadej Pogacar, who won in a shock turnaround in last year's Tour de France and did it aboard a Carnago V3 RS with rim brakes, is now riding the same bike with disc brakes. This bike is one of the few bikes like Giant TCR and some others that's available with rim brakes or disc brakes. Last year, he chose rim brakes. This year, he pretty much started the season on disc brakes and is using the disc brakes in the Tour de France. And there was a lot of talk or rumors around him using disc brakes for the flatter stages. And then when we get to the mountains where weight matters, switching to a rim brake version. But if you watch that stage on Saturday, in the big ring, wow, he's on disc brakes. So I don't think he's switching back to rim brakes. He clearly saw my video, my first ride on a very exclusive Tour de France edition V3 RS, link above if you missed that. I thought, oh, hey, disc brakes good enough for Dave. They're good enough for me. I'm joking, I'm joking, okay. So that's big news really. And that's probably the trend for the Tour of France. I'll talk about in a separate video that disc brakes had clearly been making their way into pro peloton with more teams adopting them. And now team Ineos are the only defenders of the save the rim brake movement. And their team tactics haven't gone down very well, have they really? Their four pronged attack hasn't gone to plan. I know there have been crashes and other kind of setbacks, but Pogaccia is on another level, just incredible performance, just seems to be able to ride away at will with no effort seemingly expressed on his face, just incredible performance and doing it on disc brakes. And while it's clearly too soon to talk about him winning the Tour de France, we still have two weeks of racing, a lot could happen, lots of miles and mountains to climb, yet if he keeps going at his current form, the race is his for losing. And what it means is we could see the first Grand Tour, the biggest Grand Tour of Tour de France, won on disc brakes for the very first time. Really completing the full circle of disc brake or braking technology evolution from rim brakes to disc brakes. Because clearly it's no longer an issue to the pros. They're still racing, they're still winning, sprinting, climbing with disc brakes. Not really holding them back, is it? So maybe we can just leave this to one side now, just move on ignore the disc brake first, the rim brake argument, and just get on with enjoying cycling and watching bike racing, whatever brakes they're using, because at the end of the day, what brakes they use doesn't really matter to us, does it? I just want to enjoy a good, exciting bike race. So Tali Pogaccia started the race on a Team Edition, Team Edition paint job V3 RS, like the rest of the teammates, but then rode into the white jersey as the best young rider, because he's only 22, crazy young, to have all that performance. 
but then of course rode into yellow jersey with that storming performance on Saturday and was gifted as a result a very special yellow Tour de France bike. Not the one I rode with the black and yellow details, but another very unique, very special one-off paint job to match his yellow jersey. Now it's not the all yellow affair that Mattia van der Poel had with this bike, but a rather more conservative and I think better looking setup. So half black frame, half yellow frame, yellow fork tips, yellow logo, yellow bar tape. I think it looks really smart. I like the combination of yellow and black on this frame. I think they've done a really nice job steering away from the usual all yellow, sort of boring, um, easy approach that Canyon took. Although it still looked good, I think this bike looks better. A bit of yellow, a bit of black, looks hot. The only change I'd make if I'd been really, really picky would be this swap, the tan wheel tires for some black side wheel tires because I think they clash a bit with the yellow. But let me know what you think down below. So there we are then. Some of the hottest bikes from the Tour de France so far. And we're only one week into the race. We've got two more weeks of exciting racing and I'll definitely be keeping an eye on the bikes and tech trends on show in this race. But let me know what you think of my selection down below or what bikes are floating your boat in this year's Tour of France by leaving a comment down below. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I'll see you all again next time.